Good morning, my name is Micah, and thank you for joining us in this time of devotion. I always enjoy starting my day with a time of prayer, a time of worship, and a time in the Word of God. I encourage you to do the same. It always seems to make my day better, and in fact, what I read in the Scripture tends to have something to do with what's going on in my day that day, just kind of how God works, and it makes my day better. In fact, I would say that's exactly what happened when I read James chapter 1, verse number 26, where the Scripture says, If you claim to be religious, but don't control your tongue, you are fooling yourself, and your religion is worthless. Now that's a pretty heavy statement, that if you think you're religious, and you don't control your tongue, then your religion is useless. Now, I've heard from the time that I was a little kid, probably elementary school sometime, the, the, the little sing-song phrase, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. And when I was young, I thought that were, was true. I thought that was absolutely true, but it's not true. In fact, I've experienced far greater hurt and frustration and anger in my life. I've been hurt more by words than by almost anything else. We don't live in a, a state of consistent war. We don't live in tribal warfare in our country and in our culture. And so we, we find that we're not in a place very often where we're dealing with the breaks and the hurts of sticks and stones, but we are often dealing with the words that are said, and they can be hurtful. I've experienced surgeries, though. I've experienced cuts. I've experienced scrapes. I've experienced bruises. I've experienced all kinds of things in that regard, but, well, still never experienced the hurt that words have caused me. I actually had a thousand-pound horse one time stand on me. I don't mean he stepped on my foot. I mean that he placed two hooves on my hips. It was by accident, and I'm not going to tell you the whole story right now, but ultimately I've been stood on by a thousand pound horse, and that hurt less than some of the words that have been spoken into my life. And, and I would imagine that hopefully you've never been stood on by a horse, but I would imagine it's been the same in your life that words have caused some of the greatest pains. Words said by a friend, by a family member, by a coworker, by a boss, someone that you looked up to. Words, some of them were meant to hurt, some of them were not meant to hurt. But what James is saying is that it's incumbent on us, the one that is saying the words, to guard our words, to be careful with our words, and in, frankly, not to hurt other people with our words. And he says the religious person controls their tongue. Now, I know that today it's not popular to say that we're religious. We, we, in fact, if somebody says, what religion are you? We say, oh, I'm not in a religion. I'm in a relationship. Well, that's a misunderstanding of the word religion. It just means that you have a standard, a way that you express your faith whatever that faith may be. And so we are Christians. That is technically our religion and our religious expression is that we go to church and that we observe the, the commandments of Scripture and so on and so forth. And, and, and it, we are in a relationship and we express it in a religious or a faithful manner. And that's what James was saying. He, he was saying if you are a faithful follower of Christ, then you will guard your words, and he in fact puts a heavy hand on it when he says, if you don't do this, then your faithfulness is useless. And that's pretty harsh. So why would he say something like that? First, let's understand that this is an introspective statement. So this is not something where I walk up to you and say, your religion is useless because you don't control your words. He says, if someone think themselves to be religious, so this is an introspective situation. Secondly, our words justify us or condemn us. In fact, that's something that Jesus said in Matthew 12. He said, it's by your words that you're going to be justified or by your words that you will be condemned. So he's telling us that our words are going to matter in a very major way. In fact, they consistently matter in a major way in our lives. And if our words are uncontrolled, then our direction in life is uncontrolled. 
If we don't control our words, then we might be justified here and condemned there. And he's saying, no, 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 keep it consistent. Speak words that justify, not words that condemn. How about the third, the call of the church? The third idea here, the, th- the call of the church is to be personally connected with Christ and then to bring others along with us. Now, I know in, in our world today, it's very popular in Christianity today. It's the, the, the phrase, preach the gospel at all times, and if necessary, use words, has become a popularized phrase. And on one hand, I'm, I, I say yes, because what it's saying is, live your life. Live your life as if you are a follower of Christ and allow others to see the difference that you are. And I believe that. But if you're living your life, and you're never speaking words, then we're also equally not following the commandments of Christ. He's telling us consistently throughout Scripture to speak, to testify. We testify by our actions, but we also testify by our words. It's the word of our testimony that, that we defeat the enemy and we end up finding ourselves as children of righteousness in heaven. Our words are important. Yes, the greatest expression of our faith is the decisions that we make in our life, but, but ultimately our words will be the thing that, that shares the gospel of Christ in a very specific way to a very specific person. When one says to you, hey, can you tell me something about who you are and what you believe, it's your words that are going to bring them to a place of knowledge of Christ or not. It won't be done with pantomime. You won't do it through charades. It'll be your words. And so he's saying, if you want to be faithful in Christ, control your words. And my challenge to us today is control our words. Make sure the words that we say at work and at home, the the words that we say to our fellow believers, the words that we say, make sure that they are elevational words, that they are words founded and grounded in Scripture. That they are words that are going to edify others and they're going to magnify Christ. That doesn't mean that everything you say is going to make everybody happy. It doesn't mean that you're never going to have a negative thing to say or something critical to say. Jesus did both of those things. He said words that were both negative and critical, but he did them for the right reasons and in the right moments. James was not saying that you can never speak a negative or critical word. He was saying, control your words. Don't just let them fly off. And that's our challenge today. And I'm going to just pray for you and for me right now that we can live up to that challenge and that we can show forth God's glory through our words. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your people. I thank you that you've given us words to speak. Words that benefit and bless and edify versus tear down and hurt and confuse. So today I pray that you would give us the wisdom that we need, the courage that we need. Give us the consistency and the strength that we need to be able to guard our words and to control them, to bridle our tongue. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to help us and convict us. Let that little spark of huh come up in our heart and in our spirit right before we say those words that would be hurtful or harmful. Let your name be glorified, Jesus, through us today. And we give you thanks and praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. And I believe you're going to have a fantastic rest of your day.